I'm Roger Baker, Executive Director of the Stratfor Center for Applied Geopolitics at RAIN, a global center of excellence for geopolitical intelligence and analysis. Learn how you can put geopolitics to work for your organization at RAINnetwork.com. Hello and welcome to RAIN's Essential Geopolitics podcast. On March 16th, Niger announced that it was halting the immediate effect bilateral defense corporation with the United States, adding that the presence of U.S. troops in the country was now illegal. This came after the U.S. labeled the ousting of democratically elected President Mohamed Bazoum in July 2023 as a coup in October 2023, which, was under, which under U.S. law resulted in the suspension of all non-humanitarian aid, including defense. The junta's suspension of military cooperation with the U.S. has raised questions on the future of the country's security environment. I am joined by RAIN's geopolitical analyst, Remy Dodd, to explain the situation and provide a short and long-term security outlook for the country. Hi, Remy. Glad to have you on the podcast. Hi, Emma. Thanks for having me. To start us off, what did U.S. Niger Defense Corporation consist of and what does its termination mean for Niger's security environment? Sure. So, I mean, in terms of defense cooperation, we need to understand it first began back during the Obama administration, and it was a status of forces agreement. So under this framework, we had around 1,000 U.S. military and civilian personnel dispatched to Niger. However, the Defense Corporation very much went beyond this. And, you know, we had most importantly two U.S. military facilities in Niger, which still very much are in place as we speak. The first one is uh, this airbase next to Niamey, the capital. But most importantly, we are talking about the airbase 201, which is located in the center of the country next to the town of Agadez. And this airbase 201 very much has a strategic location at the center of the Sahara Desert, which is why the importance of this U.S.-Niger cooperation goes very much beyond the bilateral level between the two countries. So, for example, this 201 base has been operational since 2019, and it very much does play an essential role in intelligence gathering missions for the U.S., of course, in Niger, where we have an expansion of jihadist activity, notably in the western part of the country, but also prior to the military coups in Mali and Burkina Faso, the U.S. also gathered intelligence in these two countries. And on top of the operations that the U.S. has had in the Sahel, it also operated in Libya through this base. So this base very much has played an important role in the U.S. intelligence gathering structures, both in sub-Saharan Africa as well as North Africa, which is why it very much is a blow for, for the U.S. to have the suspension uh, from the junta in Niger. Now, in terms of what this means uh, for Niger's security environment going forward, it is important to know that, yes, we did have information gathered by the U.S. shared with Niger's military, which did help improve the awareness of Niger's military regarding uh, movements by jihadist groups, for example. But at the same time, given that the suspension that given that the U.S. suspended defense cooperation with Niger back in October, a lot of it has already been baked in, which means, therefore, I am not expecting the security environment in Niger to deteriorate at an accelerated rate because of the determination of the defense cooperation with the U.S. Now, despite this, one thing which is important to stress here is that the security environment in Niger has already been deteriorating, and therefore, I would expect a continuation of the current trend rather than, than an acceleration of uh, the deterioration because of the suspension of this cooperation by the junta. Right. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, can you talk about what Niger's termination of the agreement means for the future of U.S. military presence in the country and um, in West Africa at large? Yeah, sure. I mean, in terms of what it means for the U.S. presence in Niger, there has been a lot of debates of what this means for these U.S. troops who are currently in Niger. We know that the U.S. is very keen to retain these two military bases, both the 101 next to Niamey and the 201 next to Agadez. Because of their strategic location, we also know that the U.S. has spent over $100 million on the 201 base alone. So there is a hope on the U.S. side that the mediation can be reached with the junta, whereby, yes, there may be some level of drawdown, but at the end of the day, 
the 2A1 base will be retained, for example. So that is the view from the US side. However, the view from the junta is very much different. And this really comes down to the fact that the junta, since day one, which was back in July of 2023, very much has rested its legitimacy on what it perceives as being the full restoration of Niger's sovereignty. And hence, you know, in the very immediate aftermath of the coup, we saw the denunciation of cooperation uh, with France. But yeah, so the bottom line here is that when you are a junta which has publicly stated uh, that the presence of US troops is illegal and you have stated that your legitimacy comes down to, you know, for example, the idea of recovering Niger's sovereignty and you're not delivering on expectations from the public, then the, the junta would very much be weakened politically. And, and this would be a problem for Chani, especially given that he has rested all of his legitimacy on you know the idea of sovereignty so it could even eventually potentially pave the way for a coup and this is why i would be of the view that uh, at the end of the day these us troops in niger will be compelled to leave over the next 12 months or so so that really wraps it up for the question of what do we see for these us troops in niger now when we think about the us presence in west africa at large we do know that the Biden administration, at least it seems to be the case, it has taken steps to prepare for this scenario that we are going through right now. And we have some reports from the Wall Street Journal at the start of the year, which said that uh, the US had been engaging with Benin, Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire uh, to secure a drone base in one of those countries. And therefore, you know, I would not be surprised to see that the US secures a drone base in one of these three countries if these mediation attempts with Niger do fail at the end of the Day. The issue here is that it's not so much about whether the uh, US is able to secure a drone base in literal West Africa, but the location of this base. And it, I would be of the view that a base in Ghana or Côte d'Ivoire would not have the same strategic location uh, as the ones currently in Niger, right? And we know, for example, that Niger is very much the place to be from an intelligence gathering perspective. Of course, you have this whole Sahelian region where you have a rapid expansion of jihadist activity, but you also have in Niger this proximity uh, with Libya, which is also of interest for the US. And on the on Niger's side, what are their options? Which countries can they reinforce cooperation with going forward? Yeah, sure. I mean, a very interesting thing here is that we have seen the junta in Niger follow a very close pattern with what we have seen in both Mali and Burkina Faso, whether it is the suspension of defense cooperation with France or this prioritization of power preservation. So given that both Mali and Burkina Faso have now the deployment of Russian power military personnel, it does appear likely that Niger will see a similar deployment of Russian power military personnel in the next 12 months, even 18 months, perhaps. So at first, I do think that this would likely be limited in numbers and perhaps focus on the training of the Nigerian military. But the role of this Africa Corps um, that Russia would be deploying could expand over time, perhaps to ensure the security of uh, the junta leader Chani, and even down the line, even engage in joint counterterrorism operations on the ground with Niger's military. So it does appear that the relation with Russia is going to be a key one for Niger going forward. But at the same time, uh, the junta also is probably going to want to keep some margin of maneuver vis-a-vis -vis the Kremlin and, and look to develop uh, relations with non-Western uh, third parties, right? And many of these countries are actually going to happen to be in the Middle East. We do know that the relation with Iran has very much strengthened in recent months, so much so that actually Western intelligence agencies have warned that Niger has reached a preliminary agreement with Iran to supply it with uranium. Now, whether this is true or not, time will tell. But we do know that Iran has reached out to, to Niger a lot and has forwarded some development in initiatives. Now, another country which also has had some interest in developing ties with Niger has been Morocco. Right? Morocco has its own interest in the Sahel. It perceives itself as having an important role historically in Northwest Africa, and it has reached out not only to Niger, but also Mali and Burkina Faso with its own initiative, which aims to diversify port access for these three landlocked countries. Now, it does appear that this initiative is not going to materialize in the medium term because of the very critical security environment here, which is in the poor state and also the lack of infrastructure. But this for the junta in Niger and also the, its brother junta, so to speak, 
unique in Mali and Burkina Faso, this is going to be a source of diplomatic support, which is very much needed. And at the same time, uh, the outreach by Morocco to Niger is also going to be a source of competition with Algeria, which has also its own interests uh, in the Sahelian region. And therefore, you know, we are probably going to end up in a scenario where the junta in Niger is going to try and play on this competition between Algeria and Morocco to maximize investment pledges, for example. Thanks, Remy. Uh, it was great to hear your insights on this, and I'm sure we'll be hearing more from you as, as it continues to develop. Sure thing. You can read more geopolitical insights from Rain by subscribing to one of Rain's risk intelligence products. Our suite of products and solutions allow clients to access the insights and analyses they need to make more informed decisions. You can sign up or learn more at our website, rainnetwork.com. That's R-A-N-E network.com. I'm Emma Kami. Thanks for listening.